Business stocks and did I mention business? <laughs> I have to poop now. <laughs> no time to wipe. I have business. No, 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 no. No! I gotta start taking my pills. have a job. But because I look and sound the part, nobody questions a thing. If you can experience that too, visit speediesequipment.com right now. Ugh. Please. Now know I am officially launching my new automotive brand, Speedy's Equipment. You can be the first person to buy these super awesome products while they last, live on the website right now. Now you might be wondering, Tom, what the f is Speedy's Equipment? Well, Speedy's actually started its life as an equipment sales and rental business that I built locally and have since closed down because I didn't want to do it anymore. However, in the process of building this business, I fell in love with the idea of a work vehicle. And by work vehicle, I mean any unconventional, obnoxiously loud, even useless truck or car that has a big logo on the doors, because it just looks important. Take this situation for example. You're in your pickup truck doing 100 miles an hour through a school zone. A cop pulls you over and he's all like, oh, you hit all those kids, blah, 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 and then you go to jail. Now take this same scenario, and you're in a very important looking Speedy's Equipment branded work truck. That cop's gonna not pull you over, cause he's gonna see you fly by, and he's gonna say, man, I bet that person has a job to get to. I bet they're in an important rush. Do not take my advice, this is a joke. In all seriousness, Speedy's Equipment is an auto parts brand geared towards making your vehicle loud, fun, and cool. We have mufflers to make them sound right, we got decals to make them important and pimp, and we got some other stuff in the works too. In this video, we're gonna be developing the ideal work vehicle. 
And no, I don't mean things that are useful and reliable. I mean things that look good, sound good, and run good. Because that's the kind of business that I'm in. So let's get to work. The first vehicle we are messing with in this shop truck extravaganza is one that you will recognize if you've known me for at least two years. Because this is a truck that I got rid of two years ago and I've kicked myself for ever since. And there's a slight possibility that I bought it back yesterday. So everybody, say hello to Hot Tomato. Now, Hot Tomato is a 2001 Silverado, regular cab, short bed, flare side, as you can see. It's slammed, and it's powered by a 5.3 LS. There is one sweet surprise, though. It's a five-speed manual. And let me tell you, I have missed this truck so bad. that I bought about two years ago, daily drove for six months, and really didn't do much to it. I bought it exactly how it is. Bright, race red, already powered by a 5.3, already a five speed. Pretty much all I did was long tube headers, 373 gears, a console conversion, and this Corvette short shifter. All of which make it such a badass truck that I can't believe I sold it. But don't worry, it's fine, because it's back now. It's back in daddy's hands where it belongs. So let's go do some stuff to it. Oh, it's not that fast, but it does run. Bone stock 5.3, might I add. It is not fast. <laughs> The main goal of working on these vehicles is to generally just improve them and make them into the shop trucks they were always meant to be. Now this one has a couple small problems that we can fix to make it sound better and look better and perform better. So let's get to it. Now the main issue with Hot Tomato is that when I originally sold it, it was straight piped. It had these nice eBay long tube headers this stainless three inch Y pipe, and just a straight side pipe. And it sounded bad ass. But I guess the person I sold it to didn't like being a badass mother as much as me. So they put two mufflers on it. Two mufflers. They also poorly welded what they made, and it does not look very nice. So I'm gonna take care of that. And the worst part of all this is that the side exhaust tip is pointed forwards and it's pushing up against the fiberglass flare side bad enough that it has cracked the paint in two spots. Let's get this pesky crap off. Also, this is a two and a half inch muffler right here. Very similar to the Speedy 10, I might add, but it's neck down from three inch to two and a half. That's gotta go. Oh, look here, behind the clamp, they welded it too. This eBay stainless is no joke, might I add. Bye bye. Okay. You all like to make fun of my welds sometimes. They're a little better than this. Not that much better, but they're a little better than this. Two mufflers. Now, we have to rebuild. We have to start from scratch. Thankfully, I have a couple of pipes to choose from. Hmm. Take a gander over here. We can see there's a three inch straight side exhaust with a very small muffler that I had on my old truck. Now, of course, we have to get rid of this because this whole video is an advertisement, but this will work. Right now, I'm realizing that this is not gonna fit very well, especially because I got this Silly Dynamax bullet muffler, which if you didn't know, is my competition now. Because Dynamax bullets are damn near the same thing that I sell, but twice as much money. First thing I'm gonna do here is cut off from this point forward, because on my tan Silverado that this was originally on, I had a homemade Y-pipe 
that it bolted to, it was bad. But that truck's gone now. Okay, and the OG is back. So we're not gonna talk about it anymore. Okay. I already know this will pretty much perfectly fit. The steel wool, quadruple zero. And a little metal polish, doesn't really matter what it is. Always gets the job done. Shoo, baby! She clean. Now this is gonna exit right about here, right in the center, right below the cracked paint. But you might be asking Tom, what or oh, what is the next step? Oh goodness gracious, I'm pissing my pants. Take our side pipe that is prefabricated, and then you take your Speedy's stainless steel resonator. That is a straight through design, 100%. There's no flared baffles. There's nothing that's gonna keep this thing from screaming. All right, and it is a legal muffler. Ooh, right there. And then we're gonna take our eBay exhaust tubing kit. This is what I use to build all of my exhausts. And we're gonna slide it on the front. There we go. They are still building these big sharpies right, let me tell you. Perfect! I'm gonna take our pipe here. Then we're gonna fit it up on the truck. <laughs> we're having a slight issue here. This pipe that is connected to the Y pipe is aimed at an awkward sideways upwards angle. So what I'm gonna do is take this angle here, and I'm just gonna cut a little bit of it off, kinda like a pie cut. And then that will allow us to get the muffler into position. So what I gotta do is cut two or so inches off of this, and then cut this, and then weld it all together, it'll be fine, it'll be perfect. It'll be so nice! Boom shakalaka, now, I'll take my angle, pop it on there, I'm just gonna weld it for now. Take our Speedy's muffler here. We're messing around with this. Play with the angles until we got this thing fitted up. We got it in a pretty good position here. It's looking nice. It's looking straight. So I'm gonna tack it in place and then take it off and weld it. Now we have a finished exhaust system fitted with the Speedy's Resonator. We will now install this bad boy. Up we go. Nice and far forwards. Well, if that doesn't sit nice and pretty in there. Look at that. I'm gonna push up against the bed a little bit because I know it's gonna drop down once I'm finished welding. About time to give this bad girl a listen. Hot Tomato is sounding better than ever. It sounds a lot like it used to with the straight pipe, but just that right amount of NASCAR tone. I'm very happy with it. Now we have one more thing to do. And that is fix the wheel hop. Like I said, I owned this truck two years ago and back when I owned it before, I put a 373 Posi in it. Uh, and then anytime I dumped the clutch, the rear end would literally just go, you know, like. One time I tried to do a burnout and it was so bad, I grenaded the Posi unit and blew a hole in the diff cover. In fact, I actually still have the diff cover. Look, this is the diff cover that used to be on this truck after I blew a hole in it, right here and then I paint a smiley face on it. So, I have a very easy solution for wheel hop. Check it out. Now when it comes to fixing the wheel hop, especially on these pickup trucks, everyone's spending thousands of dollars on the fancy traction bars, cow tracks, blah, blah, blah. I've never done that, all right? Because I found out that there's a $35 solution that both fixes wheel hop and lowers your truck at the same time. And that solution, is leaf spring clamps. Now to install these, it's quite simple. You gotta jack up the truck enough that you can fit an impact under it. And 
And then, you go in front of the wheels. These bad boys take all of two minutes to install. If you look under your truck, you'll see that the lowest leaf on your leaf springs is just hanging down. And this actually allows your axle to wrap back and forth. And especially when you're doing a hard launch or clutch dump, that is what makes wheel hop happen. So, what these clamps do is they go over your leaf spring and they clamp that leaf up. What that does is it actually compresses the leaf spring, lowers your truck down, and also avoids wheel hop. I've never actually done a clean burnout in this thing, and I'm pretty confident after this, I'll be able to. Put that up, washer, and nut. This is gonna be pretty cool. What I'm gonna do, tighten these down with the impact, and you can stand back and you can watch the wheel go back up in the wheel well and tighten everything up. Ready? I'm gonna tighten it a little bit. See it moving? Isn't that cool? Oh, it starts getting tight on you. Have no fear. Our goal is to clamp this together. Boom, wheel hop fixed. Top five easiest mods. The truck's gonna sit a little lower now too. Ooh, you see how stiff that was? One more thing. The last step to any good work truck is proper branding. And obviously this whole video is about my brand. So, we have the beautiful Speedy's Equipment removable decals that you can transfer between any vehicle you want at any time. Install is as easy as that. I mean, realistically, you want to center them a little bit, but, woo, especially if you got a nice red vehicle like this. Look at that. Uh-huh. That's what I'm talking about. Now, be warned, if you have a very Bondo-ridden door, you're going to want to steer clear of these unless you want to like self tap them in or something. Because they will blow off if you have a lot of bonding. But if you got something clean like this, boom. That adds sex appeal to any set of wheels. <laughs> Look at me rhyming on the spot. I mean, I don't mean to flex or anything, but... This might be the coolest Silverado in existence, but no big deal. Ready to unleash the gates of hell and bald eagles? Hear that 5.3 LS sing? is also an NV3500 five speed, which you should know by now is not strong. If you remember my tan Silverado, it had the same transmission and it ground every gear like a mother Ooh, there's a cop coming behind us. What are you gonna do, officer? I'm not even doing anything wrong. He doesn't think I notice he's behind me. Oh, but I do. Oh, but I do. He's gonna follow me wherever I go. <laughs> player. Hey, buddy, I'm a work truck, okay? I bet he definitely didn't hear me pull through four gears very close to him. Update. He is still following me. I think I might take a turn. See if he follows me now. Damn it. Why? What did I do, dude? What did I do? I, it's not like I am driving a nearly straight pipe Silverado with really dark tint. It's not like I'm doing any of this. It's not like I'm driving erratically. I'm 100% gonna get pulled over, but I don't know what for. Like, he didn't watch me do anything illegal. You guys did. Which, in fact, was in Mexico. We, we took a road trip in between shots. It was a crazy trip, a lot of jet lag. Okay, it looks like he's turning away now. You better. Yeah, you can stay scared. Like I was saying before we were getting followed, this truck is an NB3500 and it's very weak. Thankfully, this 5.3 is pretty gutless. It's bone stock besides headers and a cold air intake. However, 
it already grinds second and sometimes fourth. So my goal with this truck is to just baby it, you know, and treat it nice and not fuck it up because it's really nice and I don't want to tear it up. But when I inevitably do, we'll do some work to it. Let me tell you, there is nothing like a Speedy's Resonator on an LS. You take note right there, viewer. You take note. does in this thing. <laughs> it works! <laughs> As you can see, the speedo reads that we're doing 100 right now, but look, we're not. <laughs> the speedometer's terribly miscalibrated. It has nothing to do with my actual speed. For the record, you comment warriors. Blowing my hat off with all that power. Just say it. Just say it. All right, I think that's enough of this thing. Let's get back to work. perfect 65 El Camino. It's very clean and it's very cool, but it's not badass. Now as you can see, this truck has nicer paint than almost any vehicle I've ever had in my entire life, but they didn't quite have the right idea when it comes to style. This beauty is powered by a small block Chevy, punched out to a 355, it's just got iron heads and a super mild cam, but it is fuel injected and, best part, she's a gear jammer. Better yet, this is a McLeod 5-speed street strip transmission that's discontinued and it is very strong, probably able to handle me driving it. That's a good sign. <laughs> this El Camino is very fancy. It has full tubular CPP suspension with coilovers on all four corners and disc brakes on all four corners, which is baffling to me. Do you really need to stop that much? You should be going fast. You should not be stopping. So in this video, we're converting this car back to drum brakes, all around. Just kidding. Just kidding! This El Camino is by far, probably like top five, nicest things I've ever had. It drives really well, the fuel injection works great. This McLeod 5 speed shifts really nice. It's, it's too nice for me, I'll be honest with you. It's power steering, four wheel disc brakes, coilovers? What? Not for me, but it is nice. And I saw this listed for sale. Yes, I got it for a good deal, but it was also missing that Speedy's touch. It was missing that badass work vibe. You know what I'm saying? You know? Um, hear that small block? Performance test. Will it at least smoke the tires? against the El Camino is the sound. I do like the engine sound. Oh! You can hear that 350. It's going but you can't hear the pipes. I can't hear the pipes at all. They're so quiet. And you know what would fix that super easily? A couple 
speedy tan mufflers. We're back, let's get to work. Issue number one, these wheels. These are 20s. 20s are too big for a vehicle that is this size. And also, really, that spoke pattern, no offense if you have it on your car, is ugly. I do not like satin black wheels, and I especially do not like these ones. All right, they are brand new and there's nothing wrong with them, but I don't like them. Issue number two is ride height. Come on, look at this. This thing's on coilovers. <laughs> coilovers are adjustable. That means you can make this thing more like this, which is what it's meant to be. Issue three, the most important one to me, sound. And I mean, we gotta brand it. We gotta put the speedy stuff on it. <laughs> we gotta sticker it up. We gotta make it loud. That was weird. <laughs> Holy sh This is the first time I've actually put this on the lift. This is almost too nice for me to touch. I mean, we got biking coilovers, which I might say definitely need some adjustment. Damn, this thing is clean. This exhaust system. <laughs> Those mufflers are silly. Who the fuck wants magna flows? First thing I'm tackling is the mufflers, obviously. You know me at this point. You know I can't stand the sound. This is kind of dumb because everything on this truck is done so well. My choice for the El Camino, the two and a half inch Speedy 10. Yes, this is pretty much the exact same thing as what the company that rhymes with Low Faster sells. But mine is cheaper and shinier. I'm gonna have to mount them at an angle. Not a worry. Look how shiny these motherfuckers are, dude. They're gonna class up the joint a little bit. All you keyboard warriors are gonna start saying, Tom, you're dumb. I know that. But I also know that I have the right set of values. Cool cars should make noise. Because the pipe diameter on this El Camino is two and a quarter inches and my muffler is two and a half inches, I'm gonna cut on the existing muffler ends because that is two and a half inches and it'll slide perfectly into my two and a half inch mufflers. Tech tip for you. Gotta throw a couple welds on here. This thing's gonna be a prize piece. Before you say blah, 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 these were already welded in place when you started, Tom, and you're downgrading them. No, this is exactly what you can do with these mufflers. You can go to the auto parts store, and buy some nice stainless exhaust clamps, and clamp them on. Now, of course, I tack them on either side so they'll stay and won't come loose and wiggle around, but they're very easy to install. They're mufflers. I have the wrong size. This side will be done right about now. Let's hear it. So now let's put it on the lift, get rid of these ugly wheels, and solve the ride height issue. I think I'm just gonna take these all the way down. We'll solve problems when they arise. But as of right now, the only problem I see is this thing at a stupid monster truck ride height. Got my Amberzon adjustable coilover tool. We're just gonna max these bad boys out using it. And I have to do it to all four sides. All right, you know what? Maybe it did change the spring rate. All right, maybe I'm wrong. All right, so keep your comments to yourself. I probably am wrong. However, 
That's what we're looking for. We're looking for nothing. All right, we're looking for the lowest setting. We're looking to slam this thing on its ass. And obviously the front too, we have to do the front. So we'll set this aside just like this for now. Perfect. And then we'll slam the front too. Most people, when they adjust these coilovers, I would think they install them all the way raised up, kind of like these were, and then they adjust them slightly just to level out the ride height. No, that's bad. The right way to adjust coilovers is to completely max them out at the bottom, as low as they go, and then see what hits and what rubs, hammer it out of the way, and then if it still rubs, then you raise them up a little bit. So that's what we're gonna do. Just like the rear. I'm gonna take this all the way down to the bottom. I have a really bad feeling that we are going to adjust these all the way down, all around, and it's just not gonna clear anything at all, ever. And the fronts are being a real pain in the ass. It's a lot harder to adjust the fronts than the rears. So if we do do this, <laughs> do do, if we do do this, and it has to be undone, it is gonna suck. But it's a risk I'm willing to take. All right, now, after cameraman and I double teamed them, all of the coilovers are maxed out. And you really think I'm gonna put those stupid, ugly, crappy wheels back on? No. And there's a possibility that I have purchased some 18 inch American racing wheels that I think are gonna look really nice on. They're black and chrome. Instead of satin black, they're gloss black. And they're 18s, not 20s. I think they look pretty good. Let's toss them on. And I think NASCAR really won't email me. I hope this looks good, and I hope they don't rub. I'm gonna be using two lug nuts to hold them on. We're just playing with ride height right now. On the off chance, it's perfect, and needs absolutely no adjustment. And I'll just tighten up the coilovers and put the rest of the lug nuts on. But I don't think that's a very high probability. We'll see how much we mess these bad boys up. I have a feeling it's gonna be squatting horrifically bad. Okay. 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 <laughs> A different truck. Oh yeah. Tires are rubbing. Come on, tell me this does not look so good. Oh, oh my god, that looks so cool. <laughs> I don't care if it rubs. It looks awesome. This thing looks awesome. Very small problem though. Very slight issue with it. Uh, we get about 1 16th of a turn before the tire just hits the inner fender. Uh, so we are going to have to raise at least the front up, maybe an inch or two. And the rear, I'm not raising that up. I'm going to get the hammer in. Back on the lift she goes, this time, I have to take the spacer off. Because it's so low. Now what I'm going to do first is check to see just how horrifically the back tires rub the inside of the bed. Using this trans jack. I'm just gonna pretty much jack it up until it raises itself off the lift ever so slightly. And that's it. We're rubbing. How about this side? No rubbing. I think this is a problem a hammer can solve. You can see these are two separate panels. The outer quarter skin and the inner quarter are different. So I'm not gonna be hammering out the outside of the quarter panel. And I'm also using this mallet, which is not that invasive. My goal here is to bump this in. You can see where it is puffed out, that is where the tire is hitting. You can see marks right here where it's hitting, marks right, right there where it's hitting, marks right there where it's hitting. So I pretty much just gotta bump that in a little bit from the bottom to the top. I think we'll be clearing. If the previous owner is watching us right now, I'm not sorry.
Got a little dirt in my mouth doing that. You can see with the flashlight, we're actually clearing almost everything, but a little bit up here. So I'm gonna kind of mark the spot the tire passes through here. And in that inner quarter area, I just need to give it some special hammering. I might sand this a little bit because it's almost clearing. Actually, it is clearing, but we got about a millimeter. So, I don't know. Like a doctor. Now let's see if they fit. I guess I'm gonna raise the front, maybe an inch or two. Okay, where I'm at, I just gave it about an inch. I'm gonna do the same with both sides. Just incrementally raise it, all right? Because I don't want a crazy high up car, as you know. All right, calling that an inch on both sides. Where are we at? As you can see, we are contacting right now. As lame as it is, I gotta go for another wrench because you can't steer as it is right now. So, one more inch should get us pretty close to clearing. I don't mind if the tires rub a little bit on bumps as long as it maintains that bad ass ride height. Pretty close. Final adjustment. Are we done? Looking close. Looking close indeed. Now fast. Ooh, we're close to a finger here. All right, what I'm gonna do now is raise it back up, raise this one a couple more turns. That'll be good enough. And then I'm gonna tighten all the coilovers so they're not adjusting themselves while I drive. And then we're moving on to the last step. Tighten, and neither of these. And uh, both rears are good. Might I say this is much better than it was when we started. This is really starting to look like a nice car. Or truck. Or car. Cruck. Trar. I think cuck is a good name for it. <laughs> Final step to getting this El Camino to be an official Speedy's work truck is obviously the Speedy's decals. Now these doors are freshly waxed, so I'm gonna use some wax and grease remover and wipe them down so they'll stick. Now this is not necessarily great for the paint, but it's also not that bad for the paint, so go f*** yourself. Alright, this side is all so clean. Oh, these? The oh so clean and classy Speedy's equipment decals, available in white or black for any vehicle to make it an official Speedy's equipment work rig? Speedy'sequipment.com. Grab yourself a pair. So, what we're gonna do is put these right about Center. I am not gonna measure them, I'm gonna eyeball them, and they're probably not gonna be in the same spots. It's fine. This side, done. And when it comes to applying the one and only Speedy's Equipment door decals, it's nice to have either a credit card or a big Bondo applicator like this. What you wanna do first is get the sticker nice and stuck to the parchment paper that we're gonna peel it off of. So we also have our door here that is nice and cleaned and prepped. And we have to measure it, so we put this in the center. Normally I would just eyeball it, but it's a nice car. And I don't want to mess it up. So the door, about 51 inches. And the sticker, about 16 inches. 51 minus 16, do some quick math. Thirty-five. It's thirty-five. And then you divide thirty-five by two. You get about 17 and a half, I think. So, what we're gonna do is find 17 and a half from either side of this door. Boom, right there. Stick a little tape to it right there. Boom. And then, there. Beautiful, Tom. Now we are gonna eyeball it from top to bottom. That's fairly center, sort of, kinda, not really. So what we gotta do is peel it off now, which is a little bit of a tedious process. But look at this. Wow, nice and clean. Voila! And then 
Then we take our Bondo applicator, nice and clean. Start from the center and work our way out. So we want to kind of squeegee all the bubbles out. And then you just press it down so it's nice and applied. And then peel it off. Everything comes and goes beautifully. I'm gonna go nice and slow. Boom! That is oh so sexy. This side is done. I'm considering this truck done, and now I need to go listen to the Speedy's mufflers that made it all the more badass. And we'll also burn these brand new tires off. Ten official test on a small box Chevy. That's way better. <laughs> V8 power, boy. Old school. Now these nice trucks we've been working with, they're shiny, they're pretty, they don't have issues, but they're expensive. And the average Joe might have two or four grand to toss at their ideal work truck. And let me tell you son, I have the ideal work truck that fits into that price range. And that is a Chevy S10. Mwah. I made them kiss. Now my Chevy S10s, aside from them both being incested lovers, they're fantastic vehicles. And before you interrupt, yes, the Ford Ranger, the Tacoma, the Dodge Dakota, yes, they're substitutes, but nothing is quite like a good Chevy S10. Now, we'll start here. This truck has been my reliable daily driver for about six months. It's got a 224 banger and a five speed. As you can see, I've slammed it on the ground and it's got rally wheels. It's got the 90s graphics and who can forget the white trash pop-up cap. Now this truck is awesome. Gets like 20 miles per gallon, very reliable, very useful. And then we have the polar opposite S10. This is an 89. It is a piece of garbage wannabe drag truck. It has a small block Chevy, a two speed power glide and 456 gears. If you're not familiar with that terminology, that means this truck is miserable to drive. It's also open header. And I actually drove this truck to my first day of class this semester, and you gotta join my Patreon to watch that. Now we got a lot of work to do with these things. A lot of work. One, work truck. That's a complete Speedy's work truck right there. This thing, ready for business. Ready for whatever the day throws at it. <laughs> oh, these? the perfect affordable way to have a Speedy's work truck of your own? <laughs> yeah, that's what this one's getting. <sighs> Boom! We now have two work trucks ready for work. So let's put them to work. You might be wondering what work is there to be done today? Well, look at all this scrap metal. Masutangu's done, I could throw the crappy old metal away. And if you also noticed, my little green S10, is already squatting horrifically bad. And that's because I already have about a thousand pounds of scrap metal in it. That is way more than this little truck is meant to carry. So, let's get to cleaning up. The first vehicle we will be taking to the scrap yard. Hold on. I, I'm sorry, I, I gotta show you that again. Oh! 
the first thing we were taking to the scrapyard is the four banger S10. I haven't driven this thing in a while, but. With the touch of the key, she's alive. Yeah. I'm putting exhaust on it already. First test. Will the S10 pop a wheelie? This is not capable of popping wheelies. Well, let's go to the scrapyard, anyways. You can fit a little more in here. Oh, the Chevy S10, the most versatile vehicle in the world. Always fires right up. How much you want to bet a thousand pounds does not even touch the performance? Of the two two. Oh, dude, it just hooks instantaneously. All right, we have arrived. Let's see how much this thing weighs right now before we unload. Thirty-eight hundred pounds. All right, so we might have like eight hundred pounds in this thing. I hope it's at least that much. Damn, this is like a life savings worth of scrap metal. It's my kid's tuition in college. All right, thirty-eight hundred pounds. See we can unload off this bad girl. Now we're at the S10's natural habitat. The scrap yard. It rides so dude. So good. scales now. They claim I had 480 pounds of scrap. That was way more than 480 pounds of scrap. Scammers. Scammers at the scrap yard, I tell you. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you're filming? <sighs> okay. Here you go, cameraman. Weekly pay. Scrap didn't affect it a bit. All right, now for round two. As you can see, there's still scrap metal that needs hauled. And as you can see, we still have one more S10 to haul it. Now, before I do any of this, I'm gonna put different wheels and tires on the back because if we even come within a square half mile of that scrap yard, I'm gonna run something over that's gonna pop these slicks. So I'm gonna put some wheels on it, and then we're gonna get to loading up. <laughs> stockpile. I have damn near the same thing, except they're on drag radials, not slicks, and they're more worthless. So if I pop them and destroy them, I won't be destroying beadlock welds. Move! Done. About four inches of poke. That's perfect for a custom offset sticker. Oh, I've been waiting to put one of those on the truck. And then maybe I can get one that says locally hated. Everyone's gonna think that I'm so cool. <laughs> now we got some more scrap metal to load in this work truck here, now that it's got real tires on it. Perfectly good Mopar small block before I take it to the scrapyard. You just have to time travel and come here now. That's all. I'm thinking if we could kind of 
shove it up here. Yeah, that's a pretty good spot for it. Kinda on the tailgate, kinda not. Ah, oh, dude, the truck's not even squatting. This is light work for the S10. Oh, and it's also sitting on the gas tank. How perfect. I couldn't have planned it any better. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. It's a good idea. Stop saying it's not a good idea. It's a good idea. Oh, yeah, she's not moving. Drag racing. We got plenty of weight in the back now. Yeah, all this is thought through. Everything's fine. You'll be okay. Let's go! about the Chevy S10 is that you can dent them and they neither increase nor decrease in value. If anybody wants Masi Tangu's back window for some odd reason, it's right here. Closed just as good as it did before. No damage. Come on. Come on. Seriously, come on. You guys help. We out.
Keep it simple between you and me. Big bag. Big bag this time, dude. Can you read that? You see how many zeros are on there? Now we can actually hit it. truck portion of this film. What else do we have? Hello. The final section of this ultra productive, super useful video is about actual work trucks. We've been messing with a bunch of crap, a bunch of silly, silly go-go trucks, silly hot rods. These are actual work trucks. Honestly, that one's not even that much of a work truck. I drive it to like restaurants and car shows. That one, it's a work truck, come here. This is Stroke, AKA my 99 7.3 Power Stroke, the best tow rig on the planet. I've driven this thing to New York, I've driven it to New Jersey, I've driven it to West Virginia, I've driven it all over God's Half Acre, and it has never once left me down. It's broken, I've crashed it, and I've always driven it home. Just saying, best truck ever. Check it out, look. I bought this like three or four years ago, and I did a bunch of rust repair to it, and I put these, Put the wides on it, man. I got it all flamed up. Put some toolboxes on it. I pretty much just hauled lawnmowers with it for two years, and now I just tow cars with it. It's hooked to a trailer pretty much 100% of the time. We actually just unhooked it so we could record this right now. But yeah, it's nothing special. It's got a lot of miles on it. A lot of hard towing miles. A lot of good, reliable miles with me farting in the seat. Now this, if you're not already familiar with it, is Ron Burgundy. It was my dad's truck growing up. I bought it from him like six years ago. Did a little work to it, sold it. A year later, bought it back, did more work to it, let it sit. Last summer, did some more work to it, recorded it and posted it on YouTube. So you should actually know everything about this truck already, by the way. Now that Ron is done, I pretty much just let it sit. It makes the occasional errand and tows the very occasional car. But besides that, it just sits in the driveway and looks pretty. And honestly, I don't have all that much to do to these trucks. They're already swagged out. They're already Speedy's work rigs. These are actually the OG Speedy's work rigs. So, that's them, that's that. That's my trucks, you know what I'm saying? I got a lot of trucks. You might truck around and find out just how many trucks I have. Cause I have a lot of trucks. Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed this rather pointless video. However, the point of it was to make you buy things from Speedy's Equipment, which is now the best automotive brand in the world. Mr. Worldwide, that's me. All right, so go buy some Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you later, probably. Maybe not, I don't know. We'll see, bye.